Hey YouTube, welcome to another video. In this episode, I'll show you how to make good use of your old gateway or router. If you ever decide to upgrade to a newer Omada gateway and had no planned use for the old one, or maybe you are new to Omada and you have a non-Omada platform prior to the upgrade, so now you have a fully functional gateway just lying around. It is good to make it as a spare, but if you want to add a little spice to your network or just another layer of security, you can still make good use of it. Let's say you have an ER605 version 1, the original one, and you moved on to ER605 version 2, or better yet, to an ER7206, but the old one is still very capable. Or maybe you have some old TP-Link Archer Wi-Fi router, and now you graduate to using the Omada platform. In this lab, I will be focusing on old TP-Link Omada devices, but again, this idea can be implemented using different manufacturer, brand, make, or model. You will just need to adjust to that vendor's configuration and setup procedure. Okay, so this is the original design. You have probably seen it many times by now. But if not, or if you are new to the channel, welcome to the channel. I highly recommend watching the previous episodes so you are aware of the functionalities of each VLAN. So for this episode, I would like to discuss about the perimeter network. So by implementing this design, you will have two layers of network, upper layer and the lower layer. So the outer layer is the upper layer and the lower layer is the inner LAN. From the point of view of the inner LAN, your outer LAN is part of the internet or hostile. However, it's not entirely hostile because you are still in full control of your outer LAN. A normal VLAN like the admin VLAN in here let's choose admin VLAN in here all devices in that admin VLAN can see and communicate with one another so for example if I have another PC in here in that admin VLAN I can communicate with that PC or laptop or device in that particular VLAN the same rule applies for the home VLAN so all home devices whether it's a laptop, tablet, or anything, they can all communicate within one another. So that's the normal operation of the VLAN. However, with the inner VLAN design, let's say for this one, okay, this one is in the admin VLAN. Any devices behind this particular gateway is now unreachable through the normal VLAN communication. So that's the functionality of the inner VLAN. While all of the devices behind this firewall enjoys the same functionality or similar functionality and capability of those devices that resides natively in this particular VLAN, or let's say this is a home VLAN, what they are being offered on is another layer of firewall or gateway in the form of your old gateway. If a client PC here wants to communicate with the devices in here, they will, will not be able to do that unless a particular port forwarding or configuration is being done on this particular gateway. Last but not the least, I wanted to say that I prefer my inner LAN to be a simple flat network. This works great, especially if you have an old Wi-Fi gateway or router that doesn't support VLAN. However, I'm showing this design an alternate design that in this particular design the inner LAN is more complex so you can see here this is the inner LAN now and this is the outer LAN the outer LAN is a flat network while the inner LAN is the more complex network so this is the reverse part of the earlier design that I'm showing so what I'm trying to say is it's really up to each use cases and scenario as to how to design your own network but for simplicity I would really really recommend to have one level of network to be a flat network rather than all of your networks being fully complex network uh, before we go to configuration i just want to ask for your help that if you find this episode helpful and useful please subscribe like and hit the notification bell to help the channel for those who have already done so thank you very much for your continued support one thing I would like to focus on is that I'm not going to show you how to create multiple sites. I assume by now that you know how to create multiple sites. But if not, let me know and I'll create a video for that one. But in here I will have an outer LAN which I already pre-configured and an inner LAN. The outer LAN is the new gen design that I have. I just renamed it. However, I created an inner LAN in here and if I go here, you will see that I don't have any devices so let me just go back here to the outer LAN okay 
So I have my devices here. It's an ER8411 SG2210MP and EAP235. So if you're looking at the mini screen, so this is the ER8411. This is the OC300. This is the switch, and this is the EAP. Okay. So this is my old gateway that I would like to reuse. As you can see, there are no cables connected in here. I would like to use this to make it as a sub network or an inner LAN for my yeah, 8411 and the way to do that is very easy okay so I'll show you how to do that so let me just go to the switch first and check on the ports make sure that I have a good port in here so I made it an access port in here I would like this to connect to my admin VLAN it's really up to you how you want to make it but for this particular video I chose to give an IP for the inner gateway router to be in the admin VLAN connecting the cable now here as you can see here okay so I'll look at the mini video and now there you go So you will not see anything here on the console yet. Nothing will show up in here. I will have to go now to the console of the ER7206. So if, again, if you're looking at the mini video, in here, this is my home PC, okay? So let me do a consistent ping, okay? So I know for a fact that my my new ER7206, when I removed it, when I did a forget command on the mother console for the ER7206, that it will reset to a factory default setting, meaning it should have a 192.168.0.1 IP address as a default. Okay, currently I am in 192.168.1.1 network. Here, if you look here. Okay, I'm in the one that one network. Okay, so I will move my cable here, this one, okay, to the gateway, and you will see the changes in the console. Okay, so I moved it. And you can see that there will be a general failure error, as you can see. But then, as soon as I plug it here, on the rightmost. Okay, and let's see how it works. There you go, reply. Okay, and you will notice that I will also have an internet access. By default, you don't have to configure anything on your tp to provide internet access to your device. Also, I know I covered this already in the old videos, but one of the things that I learned about tp gateways for ER605, ER7206, and ER8411, so far those devices that I've used, almost every time, the leftmost port will always be one port. And the rightmost part of the port, like this one and this one, will always be LAN ports. Putting my PC in the rightmost port, I am ensuring myself that I have a LAN IP, not the one IP address. You will see that my IP address will also have changed by now. And now it has changed to 0 0.100. And you can see here. And again, you will see and you will notice that here I have internet access. go let's do a check from this network let me run this okay so you will notice that in my omada okay, in my omada which i can still access by the way so let's see if i can access my 100.100 pi desk let's see if i can access pi desk 90.100 this one there you go you can see that i can still access by desk however this one will not be able to know where 
coming from. So I'm pinging my IP 1680.100, uh, I believe. Yep, 0, 100. As you can see here, so it cannot see from my end. Let's see. So you will still see that see 90.100 all acl still applies that we have this is this is an iot network i'm only allowing vnc traffic so all the acl still apply to your outer perimeter this is what i'm saying that as far as your outer perimeter you still have full control over it you will still be able to manage it okay. so let's see if you're using a nano mother gateway you're pretty much done by just implementing it that way Okay, however, we would like to implement an inner LAN so that we can at least see what's going on and everything on our inner LAN using the Omada console. So what we need to do is go to our gateway. Okay, as you can see, this is the very first time that I'm accessing it. So let's do password and then password. I'm putting in here password just for demonstration purposes, but please use a secure username and password okay. Okay, so admin and then I said password here password. okay okay so in my console of my ER7206 so one thing I would like to do here is I would like to have this managed by Omada as well so controller settings okay. so in here I would like to put the IP address 1.100 in here 192.168.1.100 and click save there you go save okay. so now let me go to devices and refresh the settings and you can see that it is pending so this is my new old device so this is the er7206 and you cannot adapt it unfortunately in this site so if i adapt it it will complain that i already have a gateway okay let's do that so you can see the message here failed to adapt this gateway because the gateway already exists in this site and that's the reason why we prepared an inner LAN. okay so we go to inner LAN. And you can see it's pending in here let me adapt this one it will fail okay so the first time around it fails because it says that the username and password is incorrect so you have to do a retry okay so now we have to use the admin and the password that we used earlier that one and click adapt and sometimes it still fails so just do it again third time's a charm but let's see oh now it works it's provisioning just a word of warning again when you are doing this your password that you set for your device will also be changed so this one is cannot be reached through a console anymore so if I refresh this page see you can see here this gateway is being managed by Omada controller so if I try admin and then password it will not accept it anymore that means i've lost access for the standalone mode for this particular gateway i can only manage it through the omada okay, so let's do if i can ping google.com make sure okay so we're just waiting until it completely gets configured okay. So it will take some time, usually it takes about 5 to 10 minutes to adapt a new device. Uh, sometimes it gets faster, I don't really know, it depends on the firmware, but the old firmware that I have, 
it's usually from three to five minutes it gets adapted however when i'm doing some replacements some adaption takes much longer than it usually takes so i usually have a dos console something like this that i do an intermittent ping and once it goes up that i have an idea like this one i have an idea that it's already up and running however as you can see on the console it's still configuring until it says connected i'm still going to leave the console up and running so that i know that it's still working so you can see it's connected and you can see there's a log in here it's probably going to say that um, the one port has been down let's go check what we can do with this device let's see it's config yeah it's not connected we can see here that we have the sfp1 working and now you can create whatever settings that you would like to create in here as well as you can see here what networks it's going to be LAN and you can see here 0 0.1 so it's basically your another site for your Umada whatever configuration you want in here you can do unfortunately I don't have another layer of switch to demonstrate basically yeah so this is pretty much done you have your devices you have your configurations everything is connected and everything is set up and it's done so so I think that's pretty much it for this video. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you don't, please give it a dislike. But do let me know what I can improve on. I hope you will learn something from this video. Thank you again for watching this video. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you and bye-bye.